Hi guys, welcome to the Craft Beer Channel. Today I'm down at Craft Beer Rising uh, for a very special event in a very special place, almost like a hidden room. And I'm here with a chap called Tim Faith, who is Innovation Brewer at Goose Island and one of the men behind Bourbon County Stout. And I have four bottles in front of me, which is not a situation that many people have actually managed to do. Tim, how are you? Great, how are you? I'm shaking with excitement, excited? actually. Good. Uh, yeah, let's um, tell me firstly, tell me the history about this beer. Yeah, so uh, this, this beer was first brewed of probably around our, our thousand batch of beer. Um, basically, uh, our brewmaster at the time was sitting in a room with uh, Booker No at a beer dinner, and he asked him how many, uh, it, what they do with their bourbon barrels and he basically said well not really anything we send them over to scotland periodically to be converted to scotch barrels but other than that um we throw them away uh so he bumped four of them four of them over our way and we uh filled them with that thousand batch of beer we aged it for 100 days and that became bourbon county um and had that ever really been done before in beer uh Perhaps by home brewers, but no, nothing really commercially. Yeah. No. Because it is pretty hard to brew a consistent beer if you're yeah. barrel aging it. Exactly. Yeah. And then we uh, we eventually uh, bottled, I believe, our first uh, production run of that in 2004. And okay. so it's been history ever since. 12 years you've been making it. Yeah. Yeah. And how much are you making of it these days compared to what you were? Oh, it's 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 gone up like ten exponentially. Uh, we're we're probably sitting around uh, several, if not, yeah. Thousands of barrels. Jesus. Yeah. And, there, and there, there's enough bourbon barrels out there? Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Um, for, we're, we're a little bit cornered just because we, we desire uh, eight-year Heaven Hill barrels, whereas there's millions of uh, two and four years. Right. But uh, for our recipe, it requires the eight-year. So it's not like after the, after the global hop shortage, there's not going to be a global barrel shortage? No, nah, unless everybody starts massive barrel warehouses. <laughs> like barrel program. Like the one you're in right now. Yeah. Well, yeah, you've got a couple here. Uh, let's stop flirting with the idea of opening a Bourbon sure. Stout let's and do it. open it. So, a lot of smoke, coconut, vanilla. Yeah. Um, it, it ages for that full year period. Uh, temp Chicago's nice because it has a lot of temperature fluctuations, so we get really cold winters and hot summers, uh, and that, that kind of pulls and contracts a lot of the flavors out of the wood and into the beer. Hmm. So, we, we did a video about how barrel aging works on, on our channel. You can see that if you click down here. But yeah, so the change in temperature is, is forcing the beer into the wood and forcing yep. it back out and keeping extracting those exactly. vanillins and those kind of things. Exactly. Are. And especially like since those barrels aged for eight years with bourbon, they've gone a little bit more deeper into the pores. So we're picking up some a, a lot more of those complex flavors versus yeah. if we went more of the, uh, the four year and the two year, we're going to pick up more of those, uh, those tannic oak astringencies that um, we don't really necessarily think work well with this beer. So it, uh, it's actually double mash, so we do two mashes for every single batch. Um, and the, the premise behind that is basically we, we don't want to add any extra sugar or adjuncts or anything. We want to rely on totally on the malt to get all the flavor and all the sugar out of that, no matter how inefficient that might be. Yep. And then we boil it for four hours, and that boiling kind of causes, it, we get some of, the, some of that uh, Maillard reaction, so that extra caramelization. And also so that's like, like the browned meat kind of reaction. Exactly. That's all, all exactly. And delicious, like high, yeah. Really high caramels. Yeah. Um, and that'll carry through on, in through throughout the barrel aging process and into the final beer. So you're going to pick up a lot of that in the in, in this beer right now. It's, um, it's got a really long, really long caramel molasses. Like It's like sticky treacle kind of thing. Exactly. And then you just get that little booze burn on the end that cleans it all up. Rounds it out. Yeah. yeah. When, I, when I first drank that, the thing that surprised me was that little bit of acidity, which mm -hmm. you don't always get in a big imperial style. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it can be either overly sweet or overly roasty. Yep. And this one, it's just got that sort of sweet raising the thing yep. that goes through the whole thing so it's surprisingly light there's a little bit of acidity to it yeah and that that comes from a lot of like there's two elements of that barrel aged maturation um, we're, we're getting that swelling contraction in the flavors that come from the wood itself but we're also getting that micro oxidation so as the as the beer as the barrel contracts we're we're getting minute amounts of oxygen exposure to the beer and that kind of gives once you get in those higher alcohols you, you start to develop a lot more of those fruity characteristics yep. and higher caramels so oxidation is something you wouldn't want in, say, an IPA, but it's no. in tiny quantities, it's it's lightening this bit. Yeah, once the ethanol goes up a little bit, uh, in, in the smaller beers, like your, your sessions, you'll start to, you'll see that more as like a, a, an oxidation property. Um, I, I actually tuned out while you were talking, because <laughs> after I drank that, I was just like, wow, Whoa. wow, that is really, really good. The only time I ever had it, I was slightly inebriated and woke up in the morning and somebody told me I just had some Bourbon County Stout and I was like, damn, oh, no, I didn't film I it, I didn't remember, remember it. <laughs> It was a nightmare, but this, 
this is everything everything I dreamed of. Did yeah. you when when it first came out? Did they expect the reaction it got? Um, I think it's just been it's been built from uh, the customer base. I mean, the rec- pretty much everybody it, it gradually grew. I mean, I know there was a time in two thousand eight and nine where bottles actually just sat on the shelf, and in order to get the next year's, you had to buy all those, and then people would, are just still remembering that time when it, it would sit on the shelf. And, yeah, and now. It's it's pretty the difficult to get. Yeah, I yeah. Mean, uh, Black Little Friday bit. this past year, we had around twelve hundred people standing in line at the, at our binnies, just waiting for just to get a few bottles. That that is crazy, uh, but it's worth it. I think um, uh, you know we're on the craft beer channel. We're not wild about sort of the the wineification of beer. We think it should always be approachable. It should be easy to get hold of, and, and people shouldn't get too reverential about it. But every now and then, a beer comes along where you just have to slightly make an exception yeah um, and I think Bourbon County Stout is is one of those beers um, I, it's an absolute privilege to get to drink it so obviously getting hold of Bourbon County Stout is not an easy thing like say 1,200 people turned up at the brewery um, it hasn't made it out to the UK in, in a little while has it no it hasn't but you can actually expect to find Bourbon County uh, coming back March 10th through 22nd we're holding migration week um, we'll be hosting uh, tap takeovers, beer dinners all over the city of London, as well as Brussels and Amsterdam. Um, so there'll be more opportunity to find BCS and some of the more rare beers. Amazing. So I'm, I'm not just taunting you guys. Um, thank you so much uh, for sharing a bottle with me, Tim. Uh, and thank you for creating a beer. Cheers. It's magic. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs>